time out for night court. Now, stay with me here. San Diego yoga instructor Amber Giles made headlines last summer. She refused to wear a mask inside her local Starbucks. She posted about it on social media. Now, soon after that, a friend of the barista who denied Giles' service started a GoFundMe campaign for the barista, raised more than $100,000. Now, Giles is making headlines again, suing over the online fundraiser, claiming that that guy who set up the GoFundMe violated her rights by using her image without her consent. Let's argue the case with tonight's Legal Eagles, Northwestern University adjunct law professor and attorney Andrew Stoltman, and criminal defense attorney Brian Claypool, who is working with his technology uh, despite <laughs> some challenges. We're glad you are both with us tonight. I need a Starbucks. <laughs> Yes, you do. Okay, let's start, Andrew. This is Exhibit A. Now, this is the the uh, woman who refused to wear the mask, and then the GoFund was GoFundMe was set up to help the barista who told her no. Uh, she says, "I didn't give permission to use my photo, calling me a Karen, using my name, and profiting money thereof off of it. I've been attacked for sticking up for our rights under California Civil Code 51A, the ADA, and HIPAA privacy rights." So, Andrew, she says, "These people didn't have a right to use my image to raise over a hundred thousand dollars." But they do. You're the one, Karen, who posted that. I'm kind of reminded of Joe Biden when he said, come on, man, this is the ultimate in chutzpah. It's an ultimate cash grab. And at the end of the day, it reminds me of what we learned in law school, right, of the definition of chutzpah, the kid who kills both of his parents and then throws himself on the mercy of the court because he's an orphan. It's a cash grab. Yeah. It's disgusting. And you're the one who posted it, Karen. That is the example we actually do learn in law school, which takes me to exhibit B. So Matt Cohen, this is the guy who's the friend of the barista who refused her service. He set up the GoFundMe page. He says, personally, I think this is a baseless lawsuit and that Amber is seeking to profit off the good deed that I did in arranging the fundraiser for the barista in June of last year. Brian, exhibit B. Well, before Andrew breaks out the ice caramel macchiatos with extra caramel drizzle, let's talk about Ooh. let's talk about a tort in California. I know that sounds good. There's a tort in California and, and and other states, Shannon, called false light invasion of privacy. And what that means is you can't take a comment made by somebody else here on social media and publicly disclose it. There was a public disclosure here. That's the first element because it's posted all over the internet. And then the second element that we would prove here is that the public disclosure was offensive to the average person. So I would argue here that that Miss Giles has been buried. Her reputation has been buried. I mean, she had her uh, photography website hacked into. She's had people calling her at all hours of the night, harassing her. So I think that the implication really it's about what's implied through the posting. And it's implied that she's a bully and she's mean, and that possibly there's some racial racial overture because the barista is Hispanic. And then lastly, she's got damages, Shannon. I mean, she's been harassed. Her website was shut down. And who knows if she's going to get any yoga business now. Hmm. That takes us to Exhibit C, Andrew. Uh, her attorney for the yoga instructor who wouldn't wear the mask says there was an invasion of privacy aspect here as well. It's defamatory, and money was raised by him. And we know at one point she had asked for a cut of what he raised. So, Andrew, your response. <laughs> Come on. Basically, what she's complaining about is that she did something that was embarrassing to her and that she posted all over the Internet and people didn't like it. Well, guess what? If you don't like that, don't engage in that sort of aberrant behavior. And she's saying everybody's calling me Karen. Well, guess what? That's because that's the way you acted. And if you don't like the way you're being perceived, you shouldn't have act that, acted that way. This Starbucks person did exactly what they were supposed to do pursuant to California law and pursuant to what Starbucks required her to do. So to now blame this person or at least blame the person who's raising this money for her, it's frivolous, it's ridiculous, it's stupid. We will follow it and let people know what happens. Folks at home, you're the jury. Andrew and Brian, thank you both for fighting over the technology constraints and joining us. We take it now thank to the jury at home. Thanks, guys.